Hi, and welcome to the Katie Halper Show. On this week's episode, we talk to Nando Villa, the fusion journalist whose interview with Bernie Sanders about reparations launched a thousand thought pieces and a dynamic debate. Nando will also be joining us live in person Wednesday, February 3rd at 8 p.m. for our next installment of the Katie Halper Show After Dark, our free live monthly audience show, the first Wednesday of the month at the Brooklyn Commons at 388 Atlantic Avenue. Our next Katie Halper show after dark will be the Oscars Not at All White Show, in which a diverse panel of filmmakers, comedians, and journalists will discuss the Oscar So White boycott and honor people who have been ignored, snubbed, or overlooked by the film industry. We'll also be live streaming the event at katiehalpershow.com. See you next week on the radio and in person. And welcome to the Katie Halper Show. If it's Wednesday at 6-ish, it's time to tune in to the Katie Halper Show. You can listen to us every week at Wednesday. You can find us on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and of course, I'm always here with Reggie Johnson, who is uh, the engineer uh, in chief. Hello. The inimitable Gabe Pacheco. Yes, what's going on, everybody? I survived the snowpocalypse. I'm doing all right. My apartment's great. Oh, yeah, Gabe moved, everyone. Yeah, I did. I moved uh, just a block away, you know, uh, so that's great. I have my show tonight at uh, Pete's Candy Store. At 10 p.m., so uh, anybody who is done listening to the radio at that hour, come by and hang out. It's always free, and it's always fun. And who wants more funny, wants to bring the funny. Uh, so we, we always to bring be brought, the funny. To have the funny brought. And also wanted to let people know that next week at 6 p.m., we will have regular slot of the Katie Halper Show on so WBAI. You, you can listen through the headphones. You listen through the headphones, through the radio, whatever. And you can also have... An 8 p.m. live show. And that's going to be a great show. What? What? We already did that last month, and it was a great, great show. Jay Smooth was on it from the Underground Railroad. Love that guy. Love that guy. We're going to do something very fun on today's show. We are going to have, I don't know if you've heard about this, Gabe. You know this little thing called reparations? You may remember a man named ta Coates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the show. He was on the show, of course. He is the only person I've ever been, like, visibly star struck by uh-huh. and uh, was even though it was via phone yes but that's the power of the TNC of ta Coates we are going to be talking with Nando Villa great journalist at Fusion the guy who provoked a second round of ta talking about the um, reparations reparations thank you Gabe I get flustered just thinking about ta Coates but he is the man who asked Bernie Sanders recently about his position on reparations and this in turn sparked a huge debate once again over reparations let's call this reparations gate 2.0 okay we're we're naming it the remix the the remix we're going to say hi to our uh, illustrious guest nando villa hello nando are you there hey how are you how's it going you we're getting so excited about all this reparations talk i know thank you so much for joining us how are you doing i'm great how are you good how's miami oh it's wonderful you know it's sunny beautiful we're very jealous and you're here with yes my co-host Gabe Pacheco and Reggie Johnson, the engineer. Hello. Hey, guys. Howdy. Howdy. We thought that we would start off by playing this interview that you did with Bernie Sanders, which was at the Iowa Forum. Before yes. we, we play this, though, do you want to tell us anything to set it up in terms of what you were thinking when you did it, why you asked him about this, what he's like, if you could understand his thick Brooklynese accent as a Miamian? <laughs> I, I, I struggled with that, but I, I managed to plow plow ahead awesome um, next time you can bring I, me if you want an interpreter okay that'd be great yeah. uh i don't know if you've been to iowa it's not you know no. it's not the greatest place in the world but um so the, the the theme of the forum was uh race obviously right um and i wanted to talk to senator sanders about um what he viewed as the relationship between race and the welfare state that was kind of the general theme of right. the interview and i have this kind of uh, idea that the reason why the united states didn't create a robust welfare state like europe did was because we had a whole bunch of black people and the white people were not very comfortable uh giving them a bunch of money um so i wanted to explore that theme with him and, and i guess just in the context of that conversation i just i was just wondering what he thought about reparations because you know um, it's a, it was a topic that was kind of put in the national conversation a couple of years ago by ta Coates, and I hadn't seen many uh, mainstream political figures talk about it, so right. I just kind of thought, why not? Right, and uh, Coates, of course, came on, you know, many shows. He's done a, b- a bit of press himself, but among those shows was the Katie Halper Show, and he did oh. say, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, big player, big, big player in this. You know, I, I think of myself yeah. as the... Uh, 
from Coates to Katie Halper to the people. That's a joke, everyone. <laughs> I know you get that now and then, but some, you know, some WBAI people, so every now and then, their humor is not on, on fleek, if you will. But you're an influencer. Right. You're an I, influencer. I'm an influencer. As I, PR companies say. As PR companies say. And Gabe is my influencer, my co-influencer, my co-pilot of influencing, because it was his idea to talk about Central America last week. And that was, oh, nice. Yeah. And that was born by his... In to, uh, impatience, if you will, with President Obama's uh, empathy for gun violence victims, which Gabe, of course, shared, but he wanted it shared with the people who were still alive um, right. and living here, and not he didn't want them to be sent back to to death in Central America. Yeah, Central America. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, Obama's setting all kinds of records. You, yeah, you know, like just running up the score at this point. I but know. you know what? Now, uh, you know, shout outs to Obama. I guess he's saying that solitary confinement, if you're underage, is not now cool thing. Not, cool. not cool. So we're going to stop torturing some of the kids and some of the right. federal yeah. penitentiaries. Right. So, that was that was that was off of a fusion documentary on on solitary on childhood oh. solitary confinement. So, Good job, you know, we're, dude. We're, we're very proud of that. Wow. Very proud of well, that. we will link to this. Right. So when when Coach was on, he said, and he said this before, but he did say. You know, he used to be a much more standard uh, issue liberal mm -hmm. um, in the sense that I thought that, you know, many of the problems in the African-American community could be fixed by, you know, class based solutions. And then he changed his mind. As increasingly, you know, I saw more research around segregation as I saw more research around community poverty. It became clear that the, that the black people themselves are a class. And one can't, you know, sub in out, you know, the black middle class and the white middle class. These are different groups of people that racism is itself is an injury, not just, a, you know, a different kind of, you know, classism, that it is an injury in and of itself, that black poor people have been injured, that black middle class people have been injured, that black quote unquote rich people have been injured. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, in the way that like sexism injures women. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter, you know, that, that some of those women are rich. You know, just being rich does not mean that, you know, you, you're, you're not injured or you can't be injured by, by sexism. And so we're going to play the interview that you did with Bernie Sanders uh, that sparked an, another round of debates about reparations. And just from ta Coates himself, it's, it's given birth to four new articles and a lot of back and forth. Okay, here we go. Take right. it away. Thank you. A lot of African Americans are starting to call for reparations for the many years of stolen labor um, through slavery. Is that something that you would support as president? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think it would be, first of all, it's likelihood of getting through a Congress is nil. A second of all, I think it would be, you know, very divisive. I think the real issue is when we look at the poverty rate among the African American community, uh, when we look at the high unemployment rate within the African American community, the incarceration rate within the African American community, we have a lot of work to do. So I think what we should be talking about is making massive investments in rebuilding our cities, in creating millions of decent paying jobs, in making public colleges and universities tuition free and working on childcare. Basically, targeting our federal resources to the areas that it is needed the most and where it is needed the most are in impoverished communities, often African American and Latino. So that was it. The interview heard all around the world. Yes. Uh, did you know immediately that it would cause such a uh, firestorm? Um, oh, thank you. I was pleased that he didn't kind of tiptoe it. I mean, Hillary kind of was more uh, politically adept when she was asked. Do you think 2016 is the year kind of on the federal level we should start studying reparations? She kind of tiptoed around it more. I think we should we should start studying what investments we need to make in communities to help individuals and families and communities uh, move forward. And I am absolutely committed to that. There are some good ideas out there. Uh, there's an idea in the Congressional Black Caucus about really targeting federal dollars to communities that have had either disinvestment or no investment and have had uh, years of being below the poverty level. That's the kind of thing I'd like us to focus on and really help lift people up. He was he was straight up about it, which I was surprised. Um, I figured it would get some pickup amongst uh, black activists and, and journalists, but I did not foresee the amount, uh, so to speak. I, I, I definitely didn't see that coming. And then how did you find out about it? Did you just get, like, were people tweeting you like crazy? or? Once Panahasi Coates wrote that piece, and I knew because it was a very, very scathing critique. It was it was very forceful, uh, and I knew that it would um, that it would sort of spark a debate amongst 
those who um, sort of ascribe to this uh, class-based theory of politics and, and, and those who ascribe to more of an identity politics. And what do you think of, of the response that Coates has given, and what do you think of, the, of Bernie's position on reparations? His basic critique is that uh, if Bernie Sanders is going to represent the most left-wing version of the Democratic Party uh, and he doesn't support reparations, then there is basically no hope for um, the sort of mainstream left in America to um, support operations. Um, I was personally, I mean, I was su- slightly surprised and disappointed that Bernie Sanders was so equivocal uh, in, in his, in his um, non-support of reparations. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, I thought that he would, that he would basically see the, the, the moral case for it as, as pretty evident. Um, and, and maybe he does see it as evident and just made a political calculation. Who knows? Right. Um, but I, I was slightly disappointed, uh, that he, that he did not support it. Um, although I, I also do think that, uh, I do see his point though. I do see the reason why he wouldn't be so supportive right. of it, uh, because I think it, um, the politics of it are very, very difficult and he's trying to build a coalition, um, that would probably largely be against it. Right. So that was my, I mean, what I was surprised by was, I guess, that he, that Bernie, that Sanders didn't have a better kind of elevator pitch about why he didn't support it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, I mean, what I, what do I know? To me, it seems like he does probably would support them, but knows that it's politically not viable. Well, my, I, I was just wondering, when is the, when, what's the precedent for uh, po- a presidential candidates in the United States ever promoting reparations good question Gabe. Hi, Hello, ronald, ronald reagan actually uh, signed a bill that gave japanese americans reparations for the internment camps in world war ii um so you know go reagan uh, and he would never be able to be in the republican party today obviously. exactly yeah. yeah he'd be a he'd be a total pinko right, uh, totally, commie yeah. uh and uh um both sanders and hillary have supported um Forms of reparations for Holocaust victims right. uh, in Europe. So, Happy Holocaust um, Day, everyone! By the way, so it's yes. Holocaust Day. Oh, were it's they? Okay, I can say that because I'm Jewish. I mean, I'm literally just saying a fact. But yeah. I know you didn't say it in an upbeat way. I felt I like that was a very neutral Happy bo- Holocaust I need... Day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when we say that they were um, uh, both Bernie and Hillary were looking to give reparations to Holocaust uh, sort of victims, that were they promoting that the United States was going to be paying? The United States. No, they were, they were propo- they were promoting a bill in Congress that helped. Uh, that would help victims. Uh, that would that would pressure a French com- a French train company, rail company, that was used to transport uh, French Jews to uh, concentration camps well, uh, for yeah. them to pay reparations. Well, well so, um, so they're not saying that uh, the U.S. government should pay out of their own pocket. They are pointing general. a finger at another at well, a corporation that's not even a U.S. corporation. Exactly, a French, uh, and, a you know, French train yeah. company. I know a French train easy. company, no less, right? Who I mean, are, what yeah, else? Right. You would only want like a French frog <laughs> leg yeah. house. That would be the best. And they thing. hate they hate us for our freedom fries. Exactly, <laughs> they totally do. So that's one way to get back so. to them. But there's also, I mean, we don't have time to get into all of this. But there's not the fear of a Japanese planet <laughs> the same way that there is of a black planet, right? And right. Um, you know, people always argued about. I, I don't think that. Debating reparations in under, uh, you know, an hour is probably not the most useful uh, assignment for us. But I do think that, you know, one one thing people always point to is that the Japanese-American internment and the um, Holocaust, those two events were kind of discreet recent events and acute. you can trace people acute whereas and i'm not i'm not coming out against reparations for african-americans at all i'm just saying that that is what they would counter right people like well the 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 counter to that counter so to mm. speak is that, I'll take uh, your counter that um, the crimes against uh black americans did not end with slavery right, in 1865 they continued for you know you know state you know the state Sort of tacitly supporting uh, white terrorism against uh, black people for 100 years, Jim Crow, housing, uh, housing discrimination, social security, uh, all workers, kinds of gems, fun things nuggets. that continued well into the 20th century. Right. Plenty of people who are still alive today. Um, right. And and the and, and you can the, point it. You're the, right. You're totally right that you can point to in, you know incidents. And so as opposed uh, to you know. Yeah, and and to to tackle that now, since uh, since it's not so black and white as it would be American apartheid. Ooh, it's, uh, ooh, but um, wow, it's, uh, it was amazing. <laughs> He's on Gabe's on fire. <laughs> yeah, 
since there's like a sort of a matrices, a matrix of of uh, different ways that um, African Americans uh, uh, sort of experience Identify? injustice, oh. mm-hmm. b- uh, be it through redlining or police brutality, then mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't uh, Sanders' uh, uh, reparations is it sounds amazing? I'm pro reparations, but uh, aren't we? In some ways, isn't his uh, agenda tackling elements of that? Yes, sort of taking away certain threads that that create the web that's the trap for uh, black people oh, in this uh, country? Certainly, and um, I, I think that in, from a material standpoint, Bernie Sanders' candidacy would have the most, you know, has proposed the most materially beneficial platform for um, African Americans in a bajillion years. I can't right. even remember the last time. Right. Um, and, um, and, that's, and that's kind of, I guess, at the root of the um, debate that I've seen within um, within a, a, a prominent black intellectuals, uh, you know, um, Ta-Nehisi Coates really believes that the nation has to atone for slavery be- right. before it can move on. Um, we've seen evidence of, of this in, in other societies, whether it's, you know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission right. in South Africa, um, the lack of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in Spain. Oh, um, my which, God, that's my, j- yes, the, uh, that's your jam? La Transición, yeah. 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 yeah, well, I'm mm-hmm. I'm originally from Spain. My family's oh, from Spain. Oh so I, I see it every day. We're talking after um, the, after this interview. I'm calling you. We're talking uh, historical memory. Excellent. Okay. So, so he 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 believes that that is an important element of any uh, uh, be, beyond sort of the material benefits that you know giving money to poor black people would right. would would have. Um, and on the other hand, there you know I've seen some pretty scathing critiques from a guy like. Uh, Adolf Reed, who is a professor of political science, uh, political science in UPenn, he argues that um, this kind of identity politics is a way to sort of entrench the uh, injustice in, in in a certain form. So, for example, he says that like he, argue, he makes the argument that a world in which the 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 one percent control ninety percent of the wealth um, would be fine as long as that uh, that one percent is twelve percent black or whatever the the national right. average is. Right. So. So he, he, he rejects that notion, and he says that the fundamental thing is the is the hypocrisy, right. right, which he, which is what Bernie Sanders is arguing. Right, and he kind of uh, is rejecting this more almost talented tenth thesis, which no one's calling yes. it that, but it, there is some you know something right. to that. I think it's kind of like Booker T. Washington and Du Bois all over again, but a yes. little different. But um, I think that there's also a difference between being pro reparations, supporting reparations, and being pro having a presidential. Uh, candidate for the nomination be come out as pro reparations, and I think that one of the things that's kind of hard for me to understand with the understand or, or buy or agree with in, in Coates's critique, which is very uh, well written as usual, um, is and makes tons of points that I think are indisputable. But he talks about uh, the divisive nature of reparations, right? And mm-hmm. He says, I thought this was kind of the weirdest part of it, honestly. He says the, in his article, um, Bernie Sanders and the Liberal Imagination, which was a response to his more recent, his initial response to you. He says, the left above all should know better than this. When Sanders dismisses reparations because they are divisive, he puts himself in poor company. Divisive is how Joe Lieberman swatted away his interlo- interlocutors. Is that it? Or is it interlo... I never remember how to pronounce that word. Yeah, that's a tough word. Yeah, word. Okay. I, don't, I don't use it. All right, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to avoid it. Yeah. Good, mm-hmm. good for you. Yeah. That's a writing word. It is. Should yeah, it's ever, one of those, yeah. Should never be. Like, in Kuwait? Is that how you pronounce uh, that yeah, word? I don't, I don't know. know. Right. Yeah, know I'm not it could sure. could be in Choate and Kuwait. Thank you so much yeah. for being so open about this. Most people, you know, are... This is yeah. a deep, painful secret that we keep with us to the grave, but... Divisive right. is how the media dismissed the public option. Divisive is, is what Hillary Clinton is calling Sanders' single-pay platform right now. And then he goes on to say, quotes, so, quote-unquote, divisive was Abraham Lincoln's embrace of abolition that it got him shot in the head. Right, it got him shot in the head. So I, I want yeah. Bernie Sanders yeah. to <laughs> implement all, some policies, not that, get shot in the head. Well, okay, is that legal? I think that may be pr- technically illegal. Are you allowed to, <laughs> to encourage, like, death wishes on sitting senators slash presidential uh, I mean, I'm I'm kind of joking, but it, that to me is like kind of the strongest anti-reparation support argument I've ever heard in my entire life, which is like, yeah. do this, get shot in the head, and you will be on the right side of history. It feels a little Maoist or like a revolutionary, yeah. a suicidal revolutionary, <laughs> fatalistic yeah. take on it. On Actually, it. Um, Bernie Sanders is switching to the Tamil Tigers. 
He just uh, was endorsed by them and, and joined that party. Reggie sounds like a basketball fan. team. Oh, my God. What, Bernie Sanders <laughs> yeah. and the Tamil Tigers? Or a no, band. that sounds like a dope band. A dope band. All right. Um, but I thought that was – I don't get it. Didn't anyone – am I being really dense about this? I just thought that that was a um, decision oddly. I think that, I think that he, is being, he, he is being slightly disingenuous comparing the divisiveness of single payer – uh, right. with the divisiveness that a reparations movement would be. Um, totally, yeah. It's a di- I mean, not to say that the, the, uh, the battle for single-payer is a difficult one and uh, maybe even an impossible one, but it, it, it div- it's divisive in a different way, right. um, fundamentally. But I just um, think it's weird. Like, why would he use... Am I missing the, the Lincoln analogy? Because that would seem to discourage someone from doing anything that would get them shot in the head. Yeah. Yeah, Bernie Sanders is no Abraham Lincoln, I guess. And we don't want him to be one, though, either. That's the thing. Like, I don't want him to be... He doesn't want to be a martyr. People who want a president don't want him to be shot. Um, It just seems like a great way to to kind of almost uh, congratulate, you know, applaud his decision. I I have a question. Do you think that Bernie Sanders, being a viable candidate uh, in this uh, race, has opened the doors to more discussions around reparations and uh, open the doors for more sort of young African American activists to to have a voice. Like, is he? Like, I I watched all the yeah. him and Killer Mike. Uh, I, mm, I can watch them mm, for hours. I know. It's like, I tried to get them on. I'm not kidding. I tried to get Bernie yeah, Sanders and Killer Mike great. on. Not yet. But maybe if we have uh, Nando and helping us, get, you know, make you know, the make the yeah. cold, not so cold call. I, I see other uh, candidates None. ever when whenever they sort of um, try to align themselves with pop culture figures, it's always like they they're out of touch, they're out of tune, right. they don't really know what's going on. And then I watch Killer Mike and Bernie talk, oh and God. it's like they could be buddy cops. It's you like know? Sh- they it's could like be in a. Car. That would be a great movie. I'd watch that movie. Let's do it. What is it called? As they clean up the mean streets of Brooklyn, the old timer <laughs> yes. and the, the mean new streets kid, of Wall the hot shot new kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they take the on mean the execs, ex- uh, executives of Wall Street. But exactly, and one, Bernie Sanders is like the old cabbie who knows all the secret, yes. like, uh, like short, we'll uh, this, shortcuts. We'll, we'll take you know, a left, and like take a left around here. No one goes this yeah. route. I'm telling you, they all think yeah. it's dangerous, but it's not. Um, exactly. Wait, what about um? Uh, I just thought something popped into my head. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is such an exciting. Oh, what's the move called? The movie called that's out now with uh, Ice Cube. Ride, ride along, along ride along, ride sequel. along three. This is ride along three, yeah. right? So, exactly. so do, does Ber- I guess the question again is like, does Bernie just being a candidate actually offer a, a voice to a lot more of these? Well, and his policies and- also would, as as Coates himself admits, and this is why I think this is so much about framing as opposed to the impact. But Coates himself admits, oh, by the way, I just got another idea. They play Bernie Sanders and <laughs> Mike play Joshua Heschel and Martin Luther King. Just, yeah. all, just throwing it out there. Okay, uh, modern day version. Okay, so. Uh, Gabe, as to what you were saying, right? He Coates does say that um, he says that uh, where does he, he says that his positions uh, he compares his position to the rising tide lifts all boats analogy. Um, right. That's a right. That's 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 typically what um, right wing um, free marketers use right. to and trickle down. Um, yes. Right to justify not actually distinguishing between people's various. Uh, yeah, but experiences. Bernie, but, but Bernie isn't talking about giving rich people money. I know. Well, and also, no, right. let's let's just. I just want to read this part of the the coach thing. Ready? Um, he says he makes two points. One is that uh, he's defending his kind of critique of Sanders because lots of people push back and said, "Well, why aren't you asking Hillary Clinton?" Because we should note that Hillary Clinton has not been asked as much, except you did, right? No, well, no. I did not personally. They, oh, it was, it was, it was someone else. The, got it. Okay. Yeah, so, at the same event. And she yeah. kind of dodged the issue. And since then, yeah. even this past Sunday on Meet the Press, the you know the uh, tenacious D, uh, tenacious uh, Chuck Todd, tenacious Chuck Todd. C or tenacious T, yeah. that is Chuck, Chuck Local Todd. Local Miami boy. Oh, really? That is so funny. Yeah. Yeah, he really looks sun-kissed, huh? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I love you, uh, Chuck Todd. Reggie's shaking his head again. I know I've gone over the line when he does that. But he asked Bernie Sanders about reparations and like – Five minutes before he'd been talking to Hillary and didn't ask her about it. So yeah. um, this is how kind of Coates responds to the critique that why aren't you talking about Hillary Clinton? And he says, um, when a candidate points to high unemployment among black youth as well as high incarceration rates and then dubs himself a radical, it seems prudent to ask what radical anti-racist policies that candidate actually embraces. Oh, Hillary- 
Yeah, yep. I know what? what he does. He he doesn't uh, have money uh, in stocks with the prison industrial yes. complex. High five, like Just Hillary it, did up harder, until six months ago. Okay, so Hillary, ready? And and to this, coach would say, "Well, Gabe, Hillary Clinton has no interest in being labeled radical, left wing, or even liberal. Thus, announcing the Clintons doesn't support." reparations is akin to announcing that Ted Cruz doesn't support a woman's right to choose. The position is certainly wrong, but it's hardly a surprise and doesn't run counter to the ne- candidate's chosen name. Okay, here's my big problem with this, and then we can all devour it together. Um, yeah. Okay. So, first of all, she does frame herself as pro-equality, right? And yes. I don't think people know where she stands on reparations. People don't know about reparations the way they do about abortion. It's not comparable to abortion because it's hardly ever discussed, right? It's not like people know, right. well, we know where this person comes out on this issue because choice the way that they do with choice right so i think that's not fair but also then to the points that you both are making which is that um and reggie you if you want to chime in feel free of course he's but both reggie and gabe are very um uh they're what i like to call gesticulating they're gesturing and you know but what Uh. using their hands a lot but he, uh, Coates writes, what candidates name themselves is generally believed to be important. Many Sanders supporters, for instance, correctly point out that Clinton handprints are all over America's sprawling carceral state. I agree with them and have said to at length, which he has. Voters and black voters particularly should never forget that Bill Clinton passed arguably the most immoral anti-crime bill in American history and that Hillary Clinton aided its passage through her invocation of the super predator myth. A defense of Clinton rooted in the claim that Jeb Bush held the same position would not be exculpatory. Law and order conservative embraces law and order would be no would surprise no one. That is because the angle of Clinton's actions isn't simply based on their having been wrong, but on their craven embrace of law and order republicanism in the Democratic Party's name. Um, one does not find anything as damaging as the carceral state in the Sanders platform, but the dissonance between name and action is the same. So th- that's that's a big thing. His position is that it's a framing or presentation issue, but as it's important to say that the carceral state, whether or not it will directly... Well, no, of course it will directly impact, have an impact on... Uh, African Americans, his thing seems to be that unless it it kind of embraces the specificity of the African American situation, which is there, uh, it's not enough. And this is right. what he, he he dismisses as rising tide lifts all boats. But uh, he and he says Sanders' basic approach to ameliorate the effects of racism through broad, mostly class based policies, doubling the minimum wage, offering single payer health care, delivering free higher education. This is a rising tide lifts all boats, uh, thinking that has dominated Democratic anti-racist policy for a generation. Uh, Sanders proposes to intensify this approach, but Sanders' actually approach is really no different than President Obama's. Okay, here's another thing I disagree with. Ready? I have repeatedly stated my, this is Coates writing, my problem with the rising tide philosophy when embraced by Obama and liberals in general. Again, briefly, treating a racist injury solely with class-based remedies is like treating a gunshot wound solely with bandages. The bandages help, but they will not suffice. Okay, let's just say, if you want to take tackle that those analogies, right? How about this? Mm-hmm. The tide would be a lot higher with Bernie. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing. So a lot more boats are getting lifted, including black people's boats. And how about Obama's bandages are, like, uh, made of something not waterproof? And then Bernie's are a lot thicker, more durable, and maybe there's some, like, antibiotic cream thrown in there. Yeah, um... No, I, I, I think I'm, 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 I've been puzzled why um, Hillary Clinton has enjoyed such overwhelming support amongst uh, black and, and Latino voters. Um, given, I don't get it. I given really the record either. in the '90s, I don't I've, I've been, either. I've been surprised uh, by that. I can't quite. Uh, I know what it is. It's because her it. husband was the first black president. Uh, but, wh- but I don't get Morrison why Bill gets that. such a pass. Because I, he I played, understand. he played saxophone on what show was it? I'm not Arsenio even Arsenio Hall. Hall. Arsenio Arsenio Hall, Hall. Right? And then t- it's interesting that Toni Morrison, who named him the first black president, also came out and endorsed Obama. I just want to put that out oh, there. Oh, the second black president. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think he may right. have lost first black president status when she endorsed uh, the, his uh, Obama against the wife of the right. first president. I don't know what oh, I'm saying. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, um, but, yeah, sorry, yeah, what yeah. were you – yeah, I don't really get it uh, at there, all. There – there is a there is a um, a feeling I think amongst people that um, support Bernie Sanders uh, generally uh, that this this Bernie Sanders campaign or and and this, the the success of it so far is kind of like a glitch in the matrix you know like that it's just this weird kind of uh, historical anomaly that if we don't kind of seize uh, immediately um, we'll never come again 
uh, you know, uh, so I think that that's, that would, that's what drive a lot of the, um, the sort of responses to the critiques of him, uh, in, in many ways. I mean, and, and there is, I've definitely been seeing a lot of, uh, backlash to, uh, the supporters of Bernie Sanders and their, and their sort of, uh, activities online. Um, but to sort of tie, I guess, I mean, sometimes I go back and forth, but to tie the, the, the candidate to his supporters' behavior, I guess, seems a little strange right. to me as well. But, like Dave Matthews, um, I mean, he's not a great, they're, you may not like their music, but they're not as atrocious as their the fans. As a, as a, I, I went to a Dave Matthews concert not long ago. I'm not ashamed Whoa. of it. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the crowd. Yeah, it's like frat little... boys that are about yeah. two drinks away from committing a major sex crime. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, wow. they seem all hippie, but um, they're like, we love nah. this violin. Well, I, in all fairness, and we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do terrible things with wow. that. No, in all fairness, he does. I actually like this song, um, the mel- melodically speaking, that song "Crash," but it's definitely about a peeping tom. Yeah, it's uh, a little creepy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I included like, that in one yeah. of my rapiest song uh, posts. That right. I actually published. That's man's. I don't just keep a notebook of them, um, <laughs> but it's a good idea. Um, Into the night is also very rapey. I don't know if you. Oh no, I don't. We'll have to play. It's like an eighty song. Yeah. Oh, oh, not yeah. by him. Oh yeah. Into, no, I don't know. Into the night. Someone Who else. That? I don't know. We'll look it up. But then there's yeah. tonight's the night by Rod Stewart. Baby, it's cold right. outside. Um, there's a great bachata one where it's like, oh, you're Miami. It's um, Romeo Santos. Yeah. Is that it? Um, oh, Romeo Santos. Yeah, yeah he's, um, he's yeah. A una. Uh, an in- indecent proposal where Ooh, he, in all fairness enough, he, he's asking yeah. before he's like if i lifted your dress if i put something in your drink would that be okay so he's asking <laughs> using the conditional so that's helpful yeah um so what else are you working on and writing about now and i certainly don't mean to cut off the reparations discussion but i do want you to be have a chance to show off the amazing uh well i'm working on i'm actually continuing to work on reparations now i'm also doing i'm going to iowa on Monday for this little thing called the caucus, ah, uh, nice. you know, democracy in action. Right. Uh, and I'm also working on something about the uh, sort of challenging the, con- the conventional wisdom of, of, uh, of Bernie Sanders as uh, the, the sort of like broadly the idealist versus uh, Hillary Clinton, broadly the realist, okay. uh, mostly on, mostly on foreign policy terms, because I just constantly get annoyed that, um, doves get portrayed as, you know, these wide-eyed people who don't oh. really understand how the world works. That's whereas a really the sort of hawks, point. Yeah. whereas the hawks are the realists when the hawks have been wrong basically every totally. single time. Yes, and also it's not like they're making. It's funny. It's like it's. It reminds me of we talked about this. Uh, the Ben Sanders. Uh, well, I just called Ben Carson Ben Sanders. Yeah. The uh, B- Ben Carson moment when he was asked if he could, you know, was qualified to be president, would he be able to kill people? And he, his response was <sighs> amazingly that, of course, he could because uh, when He's... he looks into the eyes of the children before he operates on them and says, I'm going to break open your head right now. <laughs> and yeah. I look into their eyes and I see how scared <laughs> they are. So <laughs> his argument <laughs> was basically, my um, my surgery is is lethal and scary enough that I'm prepared to. That, that, that yeah. gives me, That's the proof that I would endanger people. When you let children yeah. know that they're about to die, yeah, you'll I, have I get, no problem yeah, putting exactly. your finger on the button. Right. Yeah. Um, but this it, idea that, that the president has to be like a murderous. Right. Uh, you and know, that keeps yeah. us safer. That's the big thing. Like, forget the moral, yeah. ethical thing. It's kind of, this is the thing with like, no, on pragmatic terms, exactly, it's wrong. That's the thing. Exactly. It's not not just on sort of on sort of like you know hippie kind of exactly. you know. But yeah, it, right. Like yeah, it exactly. Makes us it, less safe. We cr- this created. Al- I mean, our policies. I'm not not going all. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Jeremy. I read. Right? I read a thing today about we're going back into Libya. It's, it's like yeah. the, the, you know the Redux. The you right. know the after right. party. Yes, the after party. Yeah. Libya, Libya hangover right. part two. Right, um, exactly. Yeah, I Zach hear, the, I hear the, and Naka looks. the coast there is uh, wonderful this time it of is. year. So. But it's, right. I mean, yeah. what, what? Teeming what, with ISIS types. Team, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are, I mean, are there, is it the idea that, like, you know, Gren- invading Grenada kept us really safe and yeah. uh, all that stuff? And then, of course, this links back to what we talked about last week, which is our foreign policy in Central America, which was, you know, from the Contra yeah. to Death Squads to the School of the America. But, I mean the the Iran Contra thing is something that I mean you can you can almost see like a Cohen Brothers farce about oh that. Oh my god! You know, like it's like it's yes. just like the funniest. It doesn't I mean, even it's need farcification, right? It's there yeah. already. It's like a self parody. 
but yes. but terrible and tragic and and uh, yes, yes, exactly. But no, that's such an important point because you know when when people say that they try to wear the American flag and say they're real patriots because they supported the war in Iraq, it's like I'm actually I, Katie Halper, speaking for myself, am a fairly internationalist in my outlook, but I have no doubt that while while my opposition to the Iraq war wasn't really based on particular nationalism, they have no mm-hmm. doubt that like that's a more pro USA, USA, USA policy than the one that the hawks and so called patriots yeah. advocated for. So that's very good. I'm glad you're uh, pursuing that. Yeah, and, and the other sort of broad idealism versus realism thing that is this idea that Hillary will be able to push things through Congress more effectively than Bernie Sanders has been in Congress and right. the Senate for, uh, I mean, uh, a million years. And Hillary might be the most uh, hated person by Republicans right. in the universe. Right. I mean, we can remember right. what the 90s were like. Right. Um, so this idea that she will be able to work with the Republicans in Congress better than Bernie Sanders, I think, is uh, right. It's and just faulty. It's just it's just wrong conventional wisdom. Right, and it's also for, yeah. a lot of it is for the wrong reasons. Right, like I I tweeted this the other day during the the town hall thing where it's like I'm pro Bernie, but we can talk about Hillary in a way that's not sexist or even like sus, you know, that could be interpreted as sexist. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people hate her. Kind of like there's so much uh, vitriol towards Obama because of his being black. I think there's a lot of that towards. Hillary, because she's a woman. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wasn't suggesting you weren't acknowledging that. But um, right. I do think that goes into it, you know. And in a, and I do think everyone listening there, you Bernie Sanders supporters, I know most WBAI people think he's a just another tool of um, neo-colonial uh, oh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but if you are supporters, let's not be uh, vicious when and, we and, and, Hillary because it there, actually hurts our is, team, our side. There is a, there is a, uh, uh, you know... I mean, Bernie Sanders is not as radical as people right. as people. Uh, he won't sort even of define socialism. As, That's the other thing that Coates doesn't mention. Right. Is like he's not so radical. He is Machiavellian, as anyone yeah. who gets to the level where they he's can been, he's, he's been, been, he's been, he's been in politics radical. for a long time, yeah. and he's been a successful politician. Exactly. In, you don't in, get in, yeah. right. And so um, that's why when he's asked to define socialism, democratic socialism, and I'm not hating on him for this. It's, I think it's a maybe a smart move. I'm not sure if it is, but you, he clearly doesn't define it. He just says democratic socialism is if you think that it's not fair for Wall Street to be blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. He doesn't actually define it. He just uses kind of like rhetorical. And he doesn't call himself a pacifist. And you know, Right. I'm sure he's more of a pacifist than he actually comes out. Um, Probably, yeah. yeah. But I do yeah, want to say that for all their disagreements – Tanahasi Coates and Bernie Sanders do agree on how you pronounce the word plunder and blunder. Right. So if we they use do. that as a point of unification, I think... We yeah, it's like a Venn diagram, you exactly. know? They, they, they have all these things in the middle yeah, exactly. that, they, that they could just embrace. And, yeah. and I'm sure behind closed doors, honestly, like both of them totally have like so many of the same policies. Oh, I, 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 was, I was pretty disappointed that Bernie Sanders didn't, um, didn't respond to Tadahasi's... I mean, I feel right. like an interview between Tadahasi and Bernie amazing. Sanders would be like must-watch TV appointment viewing. I know. Actually, that's true. So something we left out... Katie Halper... Get it on the Katie Halper I show. will. Hey, Bernie and, and Ta-Nehisi, please come, come back, Ta-Nehisi, and come yeah. for the first time, Bernie. But I, he did, I thought that was a, a, that was a bit of a blunder for Bernie's yeah. team not to respond to Ta-Nehisi quotes before he published his piece because that would have been a good move. Um, and then, oh, speaking of interviews, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I'd like to just uh, do a little shout-out of shame to Al Jazeera for their interview with... Noam Chomsky, in which yeah. he said that he liked Bernie Sanders' policies. He, he agreed with most of them. Some he didn't. And then he also said in a swing state he would vote for Hillary Clinton. And the headline was Noam Chomsky would totally vote for Hillary Clinton. And then uh, I, I, and, and then, and then every, single other, exactly. and another, every single other media outlet picked, picked up. Yep. I mean, yeah, it was a completely... Uh, Backward interpretation, I think, yeah. of what of what, jo- of what Chomsky actually said. Do you said. think it was a, a an incorrect interpretation, or was it clickbait, or was it like some weird pro super pro Hillary anti Bernie thing? It, it, it was just a uh, you know it, it was just this it, you know the the the, the temptation to uh, post something uh, so crazy as Chomsky endorsing Hillary was right. too much to to, to resist. Yeah, we, when in reality his position was much more you know nuanced than that. Nuanced but, and also uh, Chomsky, and I would say Chomsky, yeah. and if you will, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically the uh, oh whoa huh interesting. What? I just found another thing though. It says from two days ago. It says Noam Chomsky, Bernie Sanders has the best policies. 
I hope I took. No, no, he he clearly no. No, but that's there. No, 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 but that's there. I'm saying that's the Al Jazeera. I think they may have changed it, or because that's the Al Jazeera headline I found now. America. Um, the, well, that's dead now. But oh. um, yeah, the quote the oh, quote I saw was that he would vote for Hillary against the Republican in the general. And, yeah, no, yeah, he obviously. would, and he endorsed. But I'm just referring to because I actually started writing something today. I guess I should have taken some screenshots. No, it's probably a different one. Um, but they they said, let me just see if I put Chomsky in news. Um, let me just see what happens. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, it says. Oh my God, did they change it? They may have changed it. Oh. Oh, conspiracy. Yeah, because yesterday, uh, luckily, oh, I have it. All right, so I guess this is not a, a shout out of shame. This is a nice job catching yourself before you got called out on the on D- by WBAI and the Katie Helper show, uh, right. Al Jazeera. Because, they, but yeah, it got picked up by yeah, like every Politico, single other. Politico yeah. wrote that, and then um, the New Republic, the, Daily Beast, and, the New Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they said, and Tomsky I thought I saw a bunch totally of like snarky. Yeah. Snarky tweets calling you know Chomsky a neoliberal show. Oh, and all that I stuff. know and it's like, that was embarrassing too because I'm on. I, I think I are you allowed to say something on a listserv if you don't announce who it's from or what the listserv is? Let's forget that. Let's just say a friend of mine said something like he's a neoliberal sellout, and they didn't. They clearly just went by the uh, by the headline and not the substance of the piece in which he clearly endorses. Uh, Bernie Sanders, but it's a kind of great example of the dangers of of uh, talking in public, talking yeah. in public, and also writing crappy headlines because then people pick them up. Um, yeah. Anyway, but not, I'm sure Chomsky himself was the least surprised that his words. Oh, were, well, were that's what I was thinking. It's like, wow, great to show and not tell the you know media commercial media is their responsibility and their their tendency towards yeah. plunder and blunder. Um, but Nando, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Where can people find you online? Uh, on Twitter at Nando Arvila and on uh, Fusion.net. And uh, we would love to have you back and uh, come back on the show. Maybe Anytime. if you're in New York City sometime, you should come in. Uh, come in, come on. And uh, oh, this is what it is. Noam Chomsky tells up front he would absolutely vote for Hillary Clinton. That's one headline. Then Politico's is Chomsky, I'd absolutely vote for Hillary Clinton. So we got some to work with. Um, but again, Nando Vila, thank you so much. Everyone follow him on Twitter. Check him out on this is Fu- on Fusion, which is This is Fusion on Twitter. Gabe and yes. Reggie, thank you so much. And guys, everyone, come back to the Katie Helper Show. Listen to our show next week at 6 p.m. Find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. And remember, 8 p.m. live show. 8 p.m. live show at the Brooklyn Commons. Live streams. Free. All you can eat. Not really. All you can think. Great time. Uh, Reggie doesn't like my joke. It wasn't a joke. It was uh, just excitement. Yeah, I'm just hungry. come next week, guys. Just come next 8 week, 8 p.m., Brooklyn Commons, and see you next week. And thank you again so much, Nando. Bye.